Welcome back to this course. The first thing we are going to talk about is how to scope a topic. So I mentioned the five application, but now I'll break it further down into multiple steps to study and to clear an exam and to make sure that you are solid prepared for that particular competitive exam. First step is going to be scoping the topic using Google Sheets. This entire scoping part would also reflect on my Microsoft OneNote, how I organize my notes and my Anki flashcards, how I organize my decks. So scoping is a very critical topic. And for any exam, first we need to know what the exam is all about. I also teach at Nova Scotia Community College as a professor in School of Business. And when I'm trying to teach any course or present any kind of topic in my class, I always have one thing in my hand, which is learning outcomes. What are my students going to learn from it? What is towards the end? I want to make sure that they know. And on the same learning outcomes, I deliver a lecture, which could be a bigger one. I deliver some kind of activities which help them to get engaged. And finally, I will test them on that same thing which I wanted them to learn in the first place. So these kind of learning outcomes, these kind of outcomes are always listed somewhere. But learning outcomes are not always present clearly. So for now, we will just scope out the entire curriculum. Recently, I have cleared National Dental Examination Boards of Canada AFK exam with a high 90 score as well as INBDE, which is US Boards exam. And I have used a particular strategy to scope the entire curriculum. I'll show you how I do that. And maybe whatever program you are going to take, whatever professional career you are interested in, whether it be medicine, dentistry or any healthcare discipline, pharmacy, law, management, finance, whatever your stream is going to be, uh, you can apply the same strategy to study for the competitive exam you are going to prepare for. For dentistry as an example, just as an example, because that's something I have already done. So it's easy for me to show you. If I look at the two exams that I studied for, first is the INBTE, which is Integrated National Board of Dental Examination. And the other exam that I studied for is Assessment of Fundamental Knowledge, which is for National Dental Examination Boards of Canada. So this one is for USA, this one is for Canada. I have studied for both exams. I got a very high score on this one. We don't get score on the other exam, but long story short, let's see how can you find out a perfect scope for your topic. So if I scroll down this doc uh, document, they have given us a little blueprint or approximate percentage of questions from each topic. And the topics are pretty broad, like pharmacology. There is a big, big discipline of pharmacology. You can just never know everything about pharmacology. But then further, they also give us some kind of release question, which help us find out what the learning outcomes are. I'm not going to get there right now. Our focus is how can you see an entire topic in the bird's eye view? And how can you make sure that you always see it that way? So I'm going to grab this little topic right here. Sorry if uh, these dentistry terms come as jargon to you. This is only meant to make sure that you learn how I do it on my end. So I'm going to change this screen to half in the new tab. I'll show you how I open Google Sheets. And this is the Google Sheets right here. But since you if you are a Chrome user, I would highly encourage you to drag and drop this Google Sheets icon right here on your bookmark. And I just don't leave it like this. Sometimes I just remove the entire name so that just by the icon, if I know what you are, I'll just keep the icon there rather than the entire name. And I have the icons here. Sorry, just an extra tip for minimalism. And anyway, this is my business profile, not my personal. So I have not organized my real bookmark. If you will see it on my personal profile, it is loaded with icons here because there are so many web pages that I often access. All right, back to track. I will go ahead and create a new sheet today. My first header, I always keep empty. And the next one is going to be topic. So in that, so in this one, I'm going to write down all the topics that are going to be asked in this exam. For example, pharmacology. Okay. And just like that, I have created a list of all the topics that are going to be asked in this exam. So I have a very broad overview of what's going to happen. And if I want to move some topics up and down, then I just click here and I see this hand. But if I move it down, say, for example, to medicine topics, it would just come here while 
removing the medicine topics from there so control z what i try to do is i first copy this content like for example if i have to copy medicine topics i'll press ctrl c here and then i'll go to local anesthesia and i want to move it right here instead of medicine topics and i move it right here and i press ctrl v and bring it there there might be 100 ways of doing it this is just something i'm used to and i do it a lot this is how i have roughly scoped out the topic but it's not just the topic that I need to worry about. I need to know that what am I going to study and what is something that I need to prepare and revise again and again. So this Google Sheet is right now a scoping document in this one column, but I want it to become my space repetition schedule. I want my space repetition to be reflected exactly on this Google Sheet. So what I will do is I'll show you how my space repetition schedule look. So you can see that I have color coded now. So the same topics I have color coded and I have branched them or grouped them into one kind of color. For example, local anesthesia, GA, pharmacology, um, two different sections of pharmacology. I thought these should be the similar category because it's a lot about drugs and pharmacological reactions. So I put them together in this uh, light purplish color here. Then I think endo and uh, then bleach and conservative, dental anatomy, prosto, dental materials, all these things are kind of interrelated. They speak about the same thing. Like if I'm talking about prosthodontics or endodontics, I'm dealing a lot with dental materials and dental anatomy. So rather put them in one group. So I give them this light kind of teal color. And then there is uh, peds and radiology. I have highlighted those because in, in some previous years, I heard that there were a lot of questions from these two topics. So I just made that yellow so that like it stands out for me because these are very important then orthodontics occlusion i put them in this color all the blood related topics like surgery and not me perio because we do a lot of uh, blood work like flap surgeries and stuff in perio and then there is implants of course it involves incisions and stuff all the time oral pathology histology and then biomedical emergencies and uh, biomedicine and medical emergencies i put all these in one umbrella because you'll be surprised how often you would think that the question is going to be for surgery or for a specific kind of incision or pathology, but it's just like regular medical emergency case. They just give you all the information for nothing while it just come, turns out to be a medical emergency patient management case. So that's for dentistry. Again, I'm giving a lot of dentistry jargons. I know not everybody who is watching this video is from dentistry or medicine, but I'm just trying to show you how I group the topics together and give them one color, play around up and down how I showed you in the previous video. And then the next step is going to be my space repetition schedule for which I would need to write down in this these column heads what is going to be my study material? What is something that I really need to review again and again? For example, if you have textbooks that you're gonna just review thoroughly, then your textbook reading would come right here. I have put my class notes for uh, DSTC and some release questions, then some other class notes and some questions, then there is a test on release questions. So I create my own test and I'll show you exactly how I create those tests using Google Forms in upcoming videos. After that, Anki full revision. So Although Anki is something that uh, like it just shows me some cards every day and people just use it in random orders. They are like, I'll just do 20 cards today and that's it. But I do Anki in a very systematic order, which I'll show you in the upcoming video. I My decks are exact replica of what you see here on your, what you see here on the left column, what the scope that we created for the course. And that's how I revise them. And every time I revise them, I would come back here. After that, I have some other things. Then comes my mock exams because I have created those mock exams on Google Sheets, which are bigger exams. For these tests, I actually keep it uh, this uh, course specific for local anesthesia. There will be one group of questions and I'll test myself on the topic of local anesthesia. But when I want to give myself a mock exam, then those mock exams are going to be a lot of random questions from all these topics so that I do, I'm not used to just studying one thing at a time. Rather, I test my brain or I, I challenge myself for active recall of different kind of uh, questions thrown at me from all the topics that will be included in this exam, right? And then finally, test. Test is something I keep it separate from mock because tests are 
something that some training centers offer you. For example, when I was giving GRE, these tests were from Kaplan. And when I was preparing for NBDE, these tests were from DSTC. So different places offer these kind of tests. This is just something that I had available for your exams. It could be completely different setup. You might have few things here and there. You might have some online notes, some test here, some test in PDF form, whatever it is. Try to plan it accordingly. Make sure you have all these things listed here on the column heads because sometimes we have in this digital age, especially we have so much resources, but we don't use it or we do it once and then we forget to revise it and it's just gone. So this one sheet will make sure you stay on track. You do your thing without any failure and you can clearly see if you have missed out something. Next comes my release question booklet. It's a big book that they give us to prepare for it. And finally, status. This is like something you can say that my final verdict or my uh, what, how do I feel or anything that you like. Now, right now I have put not done for everything. For example, you are starting right now. This is how I would say you start because not done is a is a word that like kills you. Like if I think Pete's is important and I have not done anything about Pete's, I've not studied anything, any topic in Pete's, then that would just give me like, ooh, I should take Pete's right now. So once you start doing it, uh, go to your, if you are taking any program, any course and university course or a private course, make sure you go through the timetable they give you make sure the topics or the scoping topics that we have written here are reflective of what timetable you have. If it's different, then maybe base it on the classes. For example, if I'm taking this DSTC class and then all my topics that I have listed here are completely different. They have like maybe grouped up local anesthesia with GA and sedation. And I'm like, oh, I thought these are two different topics. Then I'll adapt it according to the other training institute, which I'm taking. Long story short, you need to know that how much you have done. So for example, today was my local anesthesia lecture. I revised the notes. I did it once. I just read all the note. So I write once here. In the top column, if you see, I have these three colors, which is red, yellow, and green. So red is like I suck at this topic. Yellow is like I did it once, but not there yet. And I'll keep this yellow for the longest time. Red is dangerous. Like if I did bad on a topic which I already studied from yellow, I'll skip back to red. I do not put red in the first time. I'm not gonna shade all these topics as red that it's all dangerous. If I do that, it looks weird. So I'm not gonna do that. Rather, red would be right here. But when I test myself, when I create my mocks, when I when I revise my Anki flashcards and I think I really suck at embryology right now. That is going to kill me. And there were like 10 questions from embryology in the exam. Then suddenly I'll say embryology danger. So I'll go on this little bucket mark here and I'll click the red color and I'll say embryology, you are in big danger. But if local anesthesia I did once and I think I'm feeling good about it, I'll just color it yellow. So right now it's white white is not done white is blank white does not say anything but for example with some time i started completing all these all these topic once so then i can start covering them all once and i can just drag and drop this entire column like this and it will all convert into once but you don't have to do it you can manually do it it also gives you a nice feeling but it gives you a visual representation how your thing is overall going and say for example within some time you are able to do a lot more things but now your mission is going to be when would i actually see all of these things turn green and when they turn green that means you are you are barely doing any activity call. You are barely paying any energy towards answering these questions. They are coming so easy to you. So it will take time. It cannot just come like this. We will talk about space repetition again, but this is how I create a schedule for space repetition. This is how I make sure that in bird's eye view, I can scope my entire curriculum. And in this one sheet, I know what I'm good at, what I need to work on, how much time do I need to prepare for this exam? So this is just one video out of the 25 lectures in my entire course on Udemy on how to ace competitive exams, where you will learn some interesting topics, including how to scope your curriculum, digital note taking skills, space reputation, active recall, and some other tips to reduce test anxiety and focus on your exam. So join my full course. Link is in the description below, and I'll see you next time on this channel. Bye bye.